Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to another episode of Digital Artcast. Um, today I was lucky enough to be joined by Walker Erickson. Um, we talked about his career in CCP, how he got into the industry, uh, how he taught himself through uh, moving to a new school, and of course what he's doing now with his life and the power of personal projects. Um, a small apology for the audio just now, um, when we talked uh, there was a small connection lag um, and because this is the only time I got to speak to him we had to use the, the audio we had. Um, at the moment. Uh, so just a couple of technical hitches. Um, the audio might cut out just slightly when he's talking but the rest of the interview is solid gold. Um, thanks again to Borker for giving up his time and of course here is the interview so let's go. Okay. Guys, um, welcome back to the Digital Artcast. Um, Colin is not with me today, but um, I have replaced him with someone mightier and more powerful in the art world, um, Boker Eriksson, who has joined us all the way from Iceland to chat to us in Digital Artcast. So thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> no worries. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> um, so th- again, within uh, the, the confines of concept art, uh, me and you met just briefly back at industry workshops in London um, back mm-hmm. in August. Um, where you gave a talk, um, gave a quite an interesting talk actually that I've mentioned before on the Artcast um, about you know being an artist and, and finding that inner way to work within your your, your personal stuff. Um, but if people don't know you before the you know, industry workshops or before you know your kind of past experiences, how did you get in the industry? Where did you start, um, and why kind of concept art? Uh, so um, yeah, uh, I think when I was when I was like 16, 17, um, I sort of realized I could draw a little bit, or yeah. at least I always envied people that could draw when I was a kid. I had yeah. some, you know, best mates that could draw, and I thought it was like a magical ability. Yeah. Uh, but I was never really, you know, any good at it. Uh, I was okay, but I was never like the best guy in class. You know, you know that, you know that guy. Yeah, yeah, the guy that's always drawing his sketchbook and yeah. has the the awesome stuff. The, the... Yeah, exactly. The Warhammer 40k stuff. How yeah. does it do that? It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, when I was around 16, 17, um, I was studying, I think, physics or, or something. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, or, and I was just like changing, changing uh, courses a lot and just wasn't finding myself. Couldn't find your niche, yeah. No, and I I have a you know a small case of like ADD, and if I'm most interested in what I'm doing, I just like I don't do it at all. Yeah, and it's not because I'm a passive aggressive asshole. It's just because I can't, <laughs> you know. But again, so, it's, that's that's interesting. Even just to say quickly that I've found that a lot of creative types around me suffer from um, something like attention or sleeplessness or you know, lack of concentration, then it tends to be a, it's a real trait with creatives, which is crazy. I actually have a theory uh, about creatives. All is right. that um, <laughs> I was having this discussion <laughs> with, a, with a friend of mine the other day, cool. and uh, I've been talking to other uh, creatives about this, right. and they all relate to it. Yeah. And I think a lot of creatives, creative people have a, uh, a little bit under the normal serotonin level in their, yes. in their body. Yes, yes. So... They're always looking for that high, that you know, that high to either raise the serotonin or dopamine. Yep. And they do a lot of people do that through creative processes. Yep. Uh, because both the creation part and also then the satisfaction of releasing it, it sort yeah. of gives you a bit of that high. Mm-hmm. And and then of course it just the cycle continues. Yeah. And, uh, so there's something. I think there's something there. Yeah. <laughs> and also a lot of creative people are very unstable, so you know, it yeah, hangs yeah. a bit together. I think because also you, your creative life is unstable in itself. You're never really tied down to, well, unless you're lucky to be in one place at one time, but a lot of guys move around or, or switch jobs quite often, so... Yeah, oh, yeah. and it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, uh, all, all people want, like, security and, and all that. And, yeah. but, but, I don't know, there's something there that's just, like keeps us on the go. The high, yeah. So high school, so you were studying these kind of, these random subjects moving about, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was going to be a scientist or something. Oh like yeah. That. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Some, some childhood dream. But not, not fancy yourself as one of the Icelandic strong men, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm a very short guy, so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I wouldn't really like work out. Yeah. But uh, no, and then I, I, I took some drawing courses, and I sort of figured I could draw. So that very subtly sort of came my, my passion. And I started drawing a lot. And what age were you at this point? Uh, it's like 16, 17 or something. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, I, maybe even a wee bit later than most people, because some guys say, oh, I've been drawing since I was three or four or five, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, of course, I've been drawing, like, mm. my whole life, but it was never like like that. I think, it, we had yeah. to, I think we had to, like, draw, I think I had to, we were supposed to draw our hand or something right. as a reference. Yep, yep. And I just, like, something in my brain just clicked, and I could just do it. Yeah. And uh, then I sort of realized, oh, okay, you just copy what's in front of you. Okay, yeah, yeah, now I get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> some weird realization that's just, yeah, something yeah. just worked out. And from there on, I uh, I stopped. Uh, um, I quit high school and I went into, uh, or I changed high school, so I went into industrial design. Right. Yep. And I really enjoyed that, and that's when I started to get like very high marks. And uh, you know everything was going well, and then after that, I uh, uh, I was thinking about maybe going to some uh, art academy, and I didn't want to go to the one here, so I was looking at some schools abroad. And a friend of mine, he had just finished one in the Netherlands, right? So I just decided to do that. Just right. I went to went to Rotterdam, and I was in uh, Willem de Koning uh, Academy. Nice. There for like yeah, it's just over four years. And was that a, a more traditional brick and mortar art school kind of set up? Uh, well, it's not really. Uh, I wouldn't call it a traditional art, uh, art school. It's it's very arty, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and they focus a lot on the ideas more than more so than technique. Right. They don't really teach much technique, but they give you a lot of room to explore your own. Right. Like, uh, it's a bit like a laboratory. Oh, interesting. Uh, which is very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's it's a fine school. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when you compare people who have been working in, for example, who, who were studying in New York or something, right. they were like leagues above, you know, there, there was just a different caliber of like, um, uh, like techniques. Uh, yeah. Yeah, technique. Well, they do say obviously so, that part of the world you live in and off towards Scandinavia are, are kind of places where education is, is on all time high. You know what I mean? They seem to have a way of teaching across here that is just so appealing to people. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff I learned there. For example, just also just self-learning. Right. And like, and I mean, for example, the students that come out of that school, no one, no one has the same style. Right. I mean, oh, yeah. you're not force-fed any techniques or anything. Ah, it's interesting, yeah. So you get a lot of variety of uh, just everything, and a lot. Of, and I, I actually started in animation. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I was doing uh, like stop motion and uh, uh, just 3D animation and and just oh, wow. drawing cell cell animation as well. Yeah. Wow. But I just I just found it really boring, so I just I took this illustration course that a lot of uh, my, my friends were in mm -hmm. and that really worked out and so I just like yeah okay this is probably my thing so I started yeah. doing that. Interesting. Well I mean again it, it sounds like you found your identity and I think you know when it comes to artists style is your identity really it's the thing that defines you um, when you paint or draw um, and even just quickly I mean do you know the kind of epiphany you had of when you found your style or there was a style that influenced you, you know, obviously you'll probably talk about the guys you, you studied, you know, at university, was there any particular time you were looking at painting-wise or drawing-wise that you, you liked? Um, yeah, I think at some point when I was, uh, when I was uh, studying, I can't remember exactly when, it was probably 2000, 2001 or something. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, 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 <laughs> I remember. I started looking at uh, the Sitchin forums ah, um, right. back in the days, yep. and of course we're moving. Lins, uh, uh, and uh, HBX and all these guys were. Yep. Uh, and I sort of was looking at them and I was like, really? You can do that with Photoshop? You yeah. know, I know Photoshop. I can't do that. I mean, how do you do it? 
And then, of course, I mean, I discovered, oh, okay, you need a Wacom tablet. And yeah. So I bought a, like a tiny Wacom tablet, like, like an A6 yeah. in the really small ones. Kind of bamboo started, ones. Uh, I started, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I started using that to do like color studies before I uh, rendered them out in acrylics. Oh, yeah, or, wow. Or, or gouache. Uh, and that's sort of like, I was just using it as a sketching tool for bigger paintings or bigger illustrations. So you're using that to build on experience to then take that to like an actual canvas? Yeah, basically just doing studies, just like color studies and seeing how it works. Yeah. And then, um, but then I really like quickly realized that I could just like finish the whole piece there. You know, yeah. just like I ended up just finishing the paintings there and just printed them out and gave them in, uh, in the assignment. Oh, yeah, well. And all, uh, all the teachers were, you know, very, uh, how should we say? say they were reactive or you know they really liked they didn't mind getting it you know in a digital format or or yeah. as a or on a canvas yeah. so and i th i mean i was the first guy that was handing in digital artwork yeah. there um, and that was like and i actually got one of the teachers uh, who was co was sort of a legend in the illustration industry he started doing digital pa digital painting after that oh wow yeah and, uh, it's yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, definitely when it comes to stuff like Photoshop, I mean, as people think even that's a modern tool that has only come across, but you know, um, Mullins back in ILM, you know, was working with John, um, you know, when he invented Photoshop before they sold it off to Adobe, you know, he was painting with a mouse. Um, yeah, back. exactly. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I remember, I remember my first two photos, and uh, but you know, as soon as I got the, the tablet. It, Instantly came better. Yeah, and now even like these days, obviously fast forward here before we go back. But do you still are you fifty fifty with drawn on paper versus digital, or do you do you really sketch really, or do you do everything digital, or uh, mostly do more uh, figure drawing, right? Uh, on on paper. Right. Cool. But uh, yeah, I don't really use the paper anymore. I do oils as well. Right. Oh, interesting. Which I, which I really like. And the, which is actually kind of funny because it changed my whole workflow in Photoshop when I started doing oils. Yeah, because you're dealing with a, a kind of tangible uh, element outside of a brush in Photoshop, so it, it changes your way of thinking of laying yeah. down the paint. Yeah, both laying down the paint and also just like what I'm trying to achieve because there's a lot of in the pigment uh, that you sort of discover you can, it's really hard to replicate in Photoshop. Yeah. So you start trying to replicate it almost. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, yeah. That's, 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 I mean, I've even found a, a just kind of off topic, but there is a program somebody recommended to me. I think it's called uh, ArtRage, and it actually uses, um, well, it's supposed to mimic real life acrylics and oils and gouaches, um, mm -hmm. you know, the movement and flow and, and mixing. Um, it's like, you know, it's supposed to be actual paint as opposed to the Photoshop stuff, which is just a color moved across with a brush. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I tried, I've tried ArtRage, and it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I always get the feeling when I use it that I could just as well just do it in oils yeah <laughs> or, yeah you know yeah. because there's like it's trying to mimic something that's already better yeah at yeah it, you know so i don't really Use you know and you much. lose all the power of photoshop because photoshop is just like an image manipulation tool of death oh yeah yeah definitely whereas art is not yeah so. yeah well i mean like even the, the one thing i've seen is quite interesting is when i watched that uh a gum road for paul canavan and he was uh laying like a brown underpainting under the photo in it before he took it to Photoshop to paint over, which mm -hmm. which was maybe one good thing to use because I've never even seen you know because I don't come from too traditional a background, I'm um, doing design so um, an underpainting is something I hadn't have a concept of but then obviously looking at him using that I was like oh that's interesting that's that sets your whole tone for your your painting. Yeah, um, exactly. That's really clever and I think it's actually I mean I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of people use art rates mm -hmm. uh, that way to start out and because then you have sort of uh, a certain feel. Underneath, yeah, yep. you know, which yeah. isn't too labeled by Photoshop, yeah, because well. you, you got a lot of texture in the brushes as well, so it does bring out a lot of the, the, the painting in it, and so yeah. Mm. yeah, absolutely. So, you finished, you took your style, um, you qualified. Uh, what was the next step after that? Did you have a plan coming out of school? Uh, no, when I when I graduated, I had been looking at oh, well, yeah, sort of. I had my eye on an Icelandic company called CCP. Hey. Which is the, which has been developing uh, EVE Online. Uh, and I knew, like, the founder a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I sat down in a coffee with him at one point. Interesting. And he 
he sort of vaguely promised me a job when I was finished. <laughs> Uh, and then when I graduated, I just like I just went there and just like, hey, I'm here for my job. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. How did and that? He, yeah, no, I was going to say. Uh, so how did how did that meeting come about? Was that a networking event or was that just by chance or? Yeah, I just emailed him and I just said like, hey, you know, I'm out of school, so you know. Oh yeah, interesting. Wow, yeah. And I had been following up a little bit, maybe once a year, saying you know, yeah. hi, you know. Yeah. Which is which is a great networking tool. Just to even, you know, people say it's crazy. Just to even email these people with no kind of clear set. But I've found it invaluable. Just even emailing somebody, look, you know, hey, I want to get in your radar. I'm looking for maybe a job when I graduate. I mean, in local here, there is uh, access. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, first when I contacted him, yeah. I definitely uh, I wasn't really that good. I mean, I was okay. Yeah. But but he made uh, it for me. And that sort of uh, helped his decision a lot as well. Yeah, which is which is great. Again, like you say, just even just starting a conversation with these people. I mean, I know but Axis here in Glasgow. When I, before I started my three D course um, a year back, I just emailed them saying, "Look, I'm starting this course. I might, you know, eventually be looking for a job in the, the industry. Do you guys hire from this university? You know?" And they were like, "Yeah, we've worked on them a while." And I actually, just you know, off initial workshops, meeting them again after that initial email, they already knew who I was. Um, I got a wee studio tour back there in December um, to go see what they were working on, and and yeah, it's good to. I'm definitely on the radar now, so it's awesome. But yeah, it's the, yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah. And then obviously in the door, were you straight as you know, and straight as a concept artist? Because even back then, because I mean, concept art itself has only really evolved over the last maybe six, five or six years. Um, yeah. as a title for a job because obviously we've heard the rumours you know the guys back in the day working in the 90s companies where the guy who could draw best done the art you know what I mean so um, did they take you in as, as a painter as an illustrator or uh, sorry you're breaking sorry oh, you're breaking oh, sorry. up a little bit um, no I was just going to say uh, did they take you in as an illustrator or a concept straight away was that a title you were given or yeah they, they I came in as an uh, illustrator right yeah, and was that working on backgrounds or characters or? Uh, that was mostly when I started out. I was uh, originally hired to do, like illustrations to the stories that right. uh, were written for Eve. Right. Yeah. And but it was, was such a uh, that everybody was doing everything. Yeah. Yep. So I ended up doing you know concept for shapes, and I did a lot of shape modeling as well, and three D, and just wow. everything, everything art related. Yeah. And then how did you find, this is obviously a great point sometimes as well of how did you find transitioning to 3D um, coming from a 2D palette? Uh, fine, because I, I had already started 3D uh, a long time ago. I think I started 3D around the same time that I started drawing. I was using Max a lot and right. uh, um, just, yeah, and like I said, also I studied animation, so we used a lot of 3D there. Awesome, great. So it wasn't that, you know, big a deal. And was that, were you just laying the foundation for the shapes in 3D and then painting over them? Yeah, or, yeah, both. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, back then it was uh, Ausker, he was the concert artist on, on Eve and he designed all the shapes. All right, wow, yeah. And I ended up uh, doing a lot of the models. Yeah. Uh, from, but I did some concepts as well, maybe for structures and stuff like that. yeah. So, what was the the first title that you shipped? Was it was it just Eve in its initial form when it first kind of went online? Uh, I started. Uh, I actually started after release. I th I think I started in two thousand and four, right. and that was one year after release. I right. Think. Yep. And then, and you were just, which is interesting to me because you know, again, with it with it having such a long lifespan now. Um, what were your kind of day to days moving forward past release? Were you just working on stuff that was going to be released as additional stuff down the line, concepting or? Yeah, mostly, mostly, right. yeah, mostly shapes. And uh, I think the first few years went a lot just into shop, uh, into shape modeling. And I also, but I also remember we did some trailers and I did a lot of the backgrounds and uh, just images in those. Wow. Um, I was I I worked a lot with the cinema team as well. Great. Uh, just just helping them out, just art direction wise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, I can't remember when. Uh, I think it was two thousand six or something. Um, uh, I was sort of offered an art art director role in uh, in both uh, both in Shanghai and also in Atlanta. 
Wow. Uh, but I just didn't want to be an art director <laughs> yeah. because I wanted to be on the floor. So I was sort of made and uh, I became a lead artist. Right. Yep. Um, which, which is an interesting point for your career because I think a lot of people have to make that decision. Do I want to manage people or do I want to keep making art? You know, it's it's difficult because obviously, I mean, like a lot of us in the industry will not be chasing a paycheck. You know, a lot of us do it for the love, but you know, you know, you must admit when you look at like these loafers from other places that have these great, you know, kind of pay salaries and exotic cities, you, you must kind of, there's a small voice in your mind that's like, well, that maybe might be a good thing, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really, I think a good art director is a lead artist as yeah. well. I mean, there, I mean, it's, it's practically the same thing. I was, I often feel that the art director is the guy who has to write the emails Yeah. and the, uh, and the lead artist, he's the guy who can actually like just sit with people and just like guide them. Yeah. And yeah. which is of course totally wrong, but yeah. you know, it's it's a bit my my sort of my experience from. You're it. kind of t- yeah turning it. I mean, like it's such a kind of controversial thing where people are like, you know, do I want to earn a bit more money and have a bit more responsibility, or do I want to keep pushing my creative button and making the thing I wanted to make back in the day, which was art, um, and. I think it's fine that a fine balance between because obviously different studios have different variations of what an art director does. So I think the bigger the company, the the more admin you do, you're right. Um, but then, yeah, yeah it's, it's even these elite artists will still be putting on a lot of hats. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, but the whole reason I went into this is to draw and paint. Yep. And so. I mean, a bigger paycheck or something or a title just doesn't really tickle me at all. I mean, yeah. I get my my paycheck is fine. Yeah, know, yeah. I'm totally happy with that. And I can, if I need some money, I can do some extra freelance. Definitely. And I'm yeah. fine with that. So, yeah. I mean, I don't need much, you know. Yeah. Did you even see even, you know, apart from the financial game, did you even see maybe even it could have been a good challenge to push you artistically? Or did you find that you weren't really, you didn't think it would do that for you? Or? Um. Well, it would have it would have meant, of course, more responsibility, which yep. would be totally fine. But I was, I don't know, I was just probably not ready for it. I mean, yeah. may, maybe today, if I was offered the same uh, chance today, I would probably take may it. Go. Yeah, yeah, just as a like two three year experiment. But then, when you got offered it back, then how old were you? Uh, yeah, I was 2006. I was only I had only been working for like two three years. Uh-huh. I think I was yeah. How old was I? How old am I now? I think I was 27 then. Yeah, so t- yeah, but yeah, but I, I, again, it's, it's still very young, you know, for guys to be an offer. You know, like you said Shanghai, Atlanta, you know, coming from a, a like like me in Scotland, a small island culture, you know, where um, you know you, you remember you've not been in some of the bigger states and worked there in different studios so you're kind of thinking would it be for me would i enjoy it would i would i like being mm-hmm. away from home um yeah exactly yeah so but again i mean different people eh? some people would obviously see it as a great opportunity but I, I think it's there's some guys who are just always looking like that and that's the guys that will never settle who will always yeah, be chasing I, different jobs yeah oh yeah and i remember also at that time i just uh, i just had my first girl that back then ah, and i, I see, and I was yeah. still living with my wife and, right. you know, we were, you know, so, uh, yeah. I mean, just jumping out to Shanghai was a bit of a, like, a whoa. To upheave everything, <laughs> so, yeah, it would have been a lot, yeah, yeah. So, so moving forward then, you know, you worked, and, and probably you're unique in where you are, where, um, interesting because I've also got a friend who works in Rockstar here in Edinburgh, and he's been there since DMA, you know, since they were the original companies that shipped lemons, um, wow. yeah. way back and you know he's just actually um working our collab with the guys on the new red dead um but he's been in edinburgh you know forever and he's always he said i've been happy i love what i do um he's been offered higher positions he's been like no you know i want to stay where i am i love making the art so you know i think there is two schools of mind in it there's guys who are like no i want to keep chasing that next challenge and some guys who are like you know i'm i'm happy where i am so yeah it's- yeah oh, yeah absolutely and it's not like it's not like i'm not i i think I think I just find my challenges elsewhere, you know, yeah. challenges. I like to ch- find my challenges, challenges, sorry, uh-huh. within my own, like, creative art field, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think... Figure out my own, own stuff. Yeah, I think in art, especially this industry, artists and film or games, I think, you know, there is a thing that if you want to stay where you are and work, you know, people, 
you know, I, I think even coming from a culture where I used to be in an office where guys were chasing and, and stepping over each other for jobs, um, I th and again, it was a paycheck they were chasing, yeah, you were kind of looked down on if you didn't chase that next opportunity or people were like, you know, what's wrong with you? You don't want to do X, Y, or Z job or be a manager. Um, whereas in this industry we're in now, again, me being very young and, and, and new to it, I found that guys are, you know, you want to stay and do art and just be part of the art team, you know, that's great, you know find your niche find your wheelhouse and, and go for it so yeah, yeah absolutely and i mean yeah yeah exactly it's just finding that balance you know where you're yeah. being challenged but still yeah you know doing what you actually enjoy i mean yeah i mean if eve was was the guys at ccp were were still pushing that button of challenging you then of course you're going to be happy to stay there you know um yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. yeah it was a wonderful place yeah. I, mean, I was there for 12 years and yeah. I, I loved it well, and that's a, again for, for even now I think people will see that as a long time in a studio because you know like I said most guys try to jump between but yeah it's 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 rare now I think guys stay with studios so long um, but I mean sometimes it's out of the control sometimes places get shut down or projects get cancelled and you know they have to move but um, I think Eve's been um, I'm gonna I wouldn't say they're lucky they've worked really hard to get where they are and they've done really well you know to still be where they are. Um, and yeah, it's great that they've been able to employ the, you guys for so long and keep you as part of one team. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, still of the uh, some of the old people, they're still there. Yeah, know. yep, yep. And with the, and with the new blood, so yeah, it's great. Yeah, um, definitely. And then you know, you said you were there. If people don't know, obviously, because this was quite recent. Um, was it even last year you, you left the yeah, studio. Yeah. Uh, so I left the studio. It's yeah, it's almost a year now, actually. Uh, I left the studio and I uh, went to another uh, small small company called uh, Solfar, which is a VR uh, lab company, right. a VR company. But it's the same uh, founder that founded CCP. <laughs> so oh, right. So you with, went with him. Yeah. So I'm I'm working with Rainer again. And, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. And actually, a lot of people from CCP are there, uh, like oh, some wow. of the old guys. Yeah. And and then. then uh, what was the draw for going there? Was it just the people you were kind of thinking it would be great to go with, or was the project interesting to you? Uh, it's a bit of both. I mean, I, I knew all these people, and I, I knew we worked all well together, and it was going to be, you know, I, I just, and also just a new, fresh project was very right. exciting as well. Yeah, interesting. And again, the, the guy, you know, who was the founder back, who launched Eve, who was with CCP, um, he'll be the same mind, I'd imagine. He would be thinking, you know, I've done this thing, it's been great, but. I want to seek that new challenge now, so he's obviously yeah, moving exactly. forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and CCP just changed a lot in so many years. And all these years, I think when I joined in 2004, we yep. were like 30 or something. Yep. And then at some point we were 600. Wow. So, I mean, the, the company just changed a lot. It's a big team. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. it's probably comparable to the guys in Edinburgh Rockstar. They're the same. They're about, you know, nearly 600 people. Um, you know, between admin staff and that, I think they employ about 350 artists, but um, between 3D and 2D, um, although I know um, they only have about 12, maybe 11 2D guys um, mm -hmm. kind of full-time pay. Um, but yeah, that's it's interesting when the, the company evolves so quickly and you've been there since the ground in, it's, it's interesting to see that change um, going through. Yeah, because I mean, what happens is you start to get a lot of middle managers and, you know, everything starts getting harder and, you know, it's not that you can't, uh, I, I, when I when I'm working and especially on games, I like to have a very quick uh, uh, iterative process. Yep. You know, I just want to be able to do the thing and put it straight in and yeah. just like and and I almost want to do it from A to Z. You right. Know, yeah. Yeah. And the whole thing and even and also actually a large part of the draw to solvers as well is they're using Unreal. Yeah. Engine. Right. And I mean that is just such a beautiful engine. It's just, yeah. it's, it's absolutely ridiculous using it. I mean, yeah. I I'm I don't I can't program. I, I used to try to be a programmer because yeah. both my mom and dad are programmers. Yep. So I sort of dabbled a little bit with it, uh -huh. but I just can't because I don't know. There's something about text on a screen that just kills me inside. <laughs> but I can totally like. Uh, work with nodes and set yeah. up blueprints and stuff like that. Yeah. So my logical brain is fine. It's yeah. just like something with my eyes and text that just kills it. Yeah, and I've been lucky just recently with our project university coming up to our, our kind of last years. I'm doing a, a sci-fi environment um, in 3D, uh, and I'm using Unreal hopefully to render it um, to use it in real time. So um, it has been interesting working with it. Definitely seen all the powerful tools that are just. Um, you, 
it's, it's just absolutely amazing. Just oh, the yeah. shaders, the sh using you know building up shaders in it. It's yeah. just so much fun. Yeah, it's, I mean it's almost an, uh, a kind of point and click mentality. Like I just you know there's there's so much you can do just by dragging and dropping. It's mm -hmm. you know there's very, very little you know kind of logic in it sometimes. Um, but yeah. yeah. So I mean uh, even walking through you know you've you've jumped a while because you've had such a, a huge elaborate career at CCP. Um, what was your kind of your 95 walking through the door like what would your day mostly consist of once you got in and had your morning coffee um well i think every day was very different because um i was a little bit in in between the cracks right at ccp yeah i've been for a i had been there for a really long time mm -hmm. so um i was jumping a lot between projects right um I mean, for example, I worked for on Eve, and then I worked also on Dust in Shanghai, and then I also worked on World of Darkness for a few years. Right. Uh, so I was like switching between a lot, and yeah. I was often just in this. I always saw myself sort of in a bit of a support role for other visual artists, right. uh, both the cinema team and the concert artists. And uh, but then I took some pet projects as well. For example, I built all the lens flares in Eve. Uh, from scratch with right. another programmer nice. and uh, we just like decided to like hey let's make them kick ass and just like <laughs> we built our own own system around it and just yeah. uh, and i said it all up. and that was like a month or two of just doing something really pretty and satisfying and yeah and i take it would i mean hour wise i mean whatever you would feel day to day but was the majority of your day spent painting or was it mostly liaison uh, with different play people in the group yeah a bit of both i mean uh, often I got like week stretches of just painting, right? And then next week I would maybe be more you know, caught up in meetings and uh, decision making, right? Yeah, and things uh, like that. Yeah. So um, it's it's it, there's like no there was I didn't have any ritual like something. Yeah, it was different. At eight forty five, I go get my coffee and then I you know <laughs> and then I sit down with this guy and. Uh, you know. yeah 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 it was it was just where the kind of wind took you at the time yeah yeah oh, it's just like a total flux mentality just yeah. see what happens and then uh from day to day i mean how was your um your kind of your hour base i mean just for example i mean the, we've got a team or, or, or guys i know here that are based in sterling in scotland and they make a uh, train simulator dovetail mm -hmm. um and uh they guys are, are very lucky they're eight to four every day um they don't do weekends and they don't do overtime mostly um, so, and then you've got the guys on the reflex side where, you know, um, there's guys like in the EA with sleeping bags under the desks. I mean, yeah, yeah. was that a kind of happy medium for you or was it one or the uh, other? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at CCP, I mean, in the early days, uh, when we were still struggling a lot, of course we did do some, uh, overtime and especially before release. Yep. Before the releases, I mean, we did, mm -hmm. but we, nobody was ever forced to do overtime. It was more just like, all right, let's do this shit. And yeah. you know, we did it. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, you know, honestly, I don't think I ever saw overtime at CCP for the last like five, six, seven years. Oh, wow. Unless, yeah. unless when I was in like trips to Shanghai or Atlanta, then, then of course you're just working 18 hours and you go to sleep and then you wake yeah. up. <laughs> Get back up and work again. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's totally fine. Yeah. I mean, but again, it's one of these these things that's where, again, it's a rare industry we're in where most guys who are here, in fact, probably everybody who's here loves their job and wants to be here, you know, so asking somebody to work extra time then um, is something that, you know, even though you'll have to ask it sometimes, you, you, like you said, you'd just be motivated to make the best game you can make, so, you know, everybody gets behind it. Yeah, oh yeah, and I mean, it's it's fine. I think it's totally fine to do it in bursts, but yeah. you have to be so careful with it because it's so soul draining. And yeah. and the problem is, as soon as you start getting tired, you start to work very uh, not so smart. You start getting dumb. Yeah. And you start making making mistakes. And I I just know myself very well that if I'm if I'm working on something and I start doing mistakes, yeah, it's just it's just time consuming. It's just yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna have to go back in later and fix it. Yeah. You're yeah. just gonna burn and the wasted stuff at the end that you're just gonna yeah yeah i'd rather i'd rather stand up and seek inspiration from you know the coffee machine or something or, yeah, you know, yeah, anything a... else it doesn't matter just like or just have a walk or like yeah. play a bit of portal or you know it doesn't matter it's just like yeah because sometimes even you know i comment myself when you're painting something and you just get to that point where you're like what 
what the fuck can I do with this painting now? Like, uh, my brain is, you know, what am I doing? You, you've been there for two, three hours, you've rendered, and then you're like, where is the next step? I just kind of see it. So I've done it. I've walked, I went out and walked down the street, or I've just, you know, sat on my couch for five minutes and read something, and then, you know, it just comes to you, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, my favorite way of painting is like starting something and then just throwing it, in, throwing it into my unfinished folder and then looking at it again in like two, three months and just see something completely different out of it and continue and then throw it again into the like unfinished yeah. and come back to it. And just like, so I have like, I often have, as with my personal projects, I often have like, I don't know, my unfinished folder is just packed with ugly pictures that I sometimes come back to and just finish up. And yeah. just like, because then I see, ah, okay, I, because there was something there and now I see how I can like draw that forward or fix it or make it more interesting. Yeah. When you come back to something with like a kind of um, fresh pair of eyes. Yeah, um, exactly. Because it's so easy to get tunnel vision and get, you know, emotional about the thing you're working on. Yep, definitely. And then again, it's it's one of these things that I think we're very lucky just now in this kind of day and age is that, um, you know, with the internet and Facebook exploding so much and stuff like obviously Art Station, you know, has been around for a bit, but it being so big now, um, there's so much feedback, there's so much stuff that people can come back with you. You can post something on Facebook and in five minutes, 10 people can tell you what's wrong or right with it, um, which I think is great. Um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, I, I mean, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a good thing, but yeah. I... I all yeah oh, sorry no continue no no that's fine uh, no but I'll just I think you kind of kind of covered this and stuff when you talked about you know your talk was about painting principles um and you were talking about you know some things that um are great to see at these in, at the industry events because again it's something like even when you talked about contrast in paintings um going back you know thinking about it um it seems such an obvious thing but you point out and a lot of your paintings and using a lot of examples it's you know, having this feedback now in this day and age is, is great and these are these events, these stuff like art station, stuff like industry workshops. Um and then again you you know, you talked a lot about your personal stuff and, and things you painted. Um even the, the market scene I think you highlighted, um that oh, you yeah. came, you came back to a couple of times. Um and that was that was a, a kind of thing where you did start that and it was something and it changed into something different. I, I, I can remember vaguely, you, kinda, you, you cropped it, I think? You changed the... Yeah, the, the, I, I cropped it a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I remember uh, when I was working on that image, um, there was just this one part that I really liked. Yep. And I ended up just like cropping it, you know, just yeah. like really aggressively and just like just zooming in on something and just rendering that out. Retraining and, the focus, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I mean, it's a, it's a very common thing to do, but I just loved it, you know, because yeah. it's like, it was a totally different thing. Yeah, and again, I, you know, you've spoke at length about this in other talks and stuff like that, but just for our audience, I mean, what is your view on personal or kind of passion projects? I mean, we all know, I think, at this point that it's great to have something outside the work you focus on, but what is your kind of professional take on it? How do you feel about this stuff? Just about personal work. Yeah, yeah, just uh, yeah, the kind of power of having something that is away from work, that is away from your day to day. Yeah, um, I mean, the yeah, <laughs> the older I get, the more important I think it is to be uh, uh, to find like the artist inside you. Yep. And not be a whore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, because I mean, uh, you know, being you know being a worker, and I'm not saying I mean of course you can totally do art. You know, I mean, I mean games are, and movies are art. Yep. But it's not. I mean, for me pers personally, it's not. I mean, maybe I'm just very egotistic. I just like to be like to find the artist within me. Yeah. Uh, am I, I whether I'm doing it or not? And I don't mean that either as a sort of egotistic artist kind of thing. It's just yeah. I'm sort of just, just, just slowly discovering that, you know, that's more what life is about. Yeah, definitely. Taking that kind of time, yeah, to, to find yourself. Yeah, exactly. And just like explore that. And yeah. Because the industry, you know, company, and I have been like super lucky in a company. I mean, worked with one of the best companies, uh, in my opinion. I mean, really cared for the workers and uh, yeah. there was a, the people there were you know were amazing 
Yeah. And, uh, I learned so much from them. Yeah. But in the end, it's it's just a job. Yeah. And you, you I, don't know. To... I, I know it sounds bleak. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, definitely. I mean, I, I, you know, I, you and I both know even like Titus, and, and Titus is the same where he's he's tried to walk away from some of the bigger studios and, and find, you know, his art outside of that job and something that defines him as an artist, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's more personal to him. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I always see myself in like, I don't know, when I'm an old man, I'll be living on an island somewhere and I'll just be doing oil paintings. Yeah, know? yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, it's, it, I, I promise you it's not going to happen, but that's yeah. where I see myself. <laughs> yeah, it's as soon as you get away from the, the frozen tundra that is Iceland. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same as Scotland, buddy. I mean, we've got it here as well. It's, it's the, the winter has definitely hit here and uh, we were minus four, I think, the other night. And uh, yeah, you've got to be a hardy people to live where we live, so... Yeah, I would definitely move south. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, obviously you've had this uh, illustrious career, and uh, you know you've you've worked with CCP. You know you've you've moved on to this new project, um, and you've done a lot of talks. You've done a lot of stuff, given back. Um, I mean, in general, as the, the kind of question we ask most people, and you know most answers are the same, but now and again you get a bit different. Um, I w- always wondered. What is your take on guys coming in the, into the industry, you know, like myself or other people? Um, what do you think is, is the kind of the most important things to aim for when trying to find work or, or practicing or um, just a kind of general thing about, you know, starting in the industry? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, of course, it's a bit tough to say. Because um, yeah. there's, uh, always... there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, but, you know, I could just be brutally honest. When I look at portfolios and when I'm looking at people I want to hire, yep. at, like, uniqueness, you know, what can this person give me yep. as opposed to, you know, all the other that are, you know, seeking work? Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it comes just down to, uh, not style, but more like to the character. I mean, what's the interests? What's the... You know what can what can he worker he or she give me that you know we don't have yeah. you know uh, because uh, it's it's not that hard to find people who can just like work 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 yeah but it's really fucking hard to find people with a good eye yeah and who like know when to take the right decisions and are smart and clever. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I personally, I value that more um, from workers. And I'm not saying, like, uh, everybody needs to, like, do that. But yeah. that's what I'm looking for when I'm, you know, looking for creative people. And, of course, that they're diligent and hard workers, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But that's that's going to be proven when they're hired. Yeah. You, know, you can't see that before. Yeah, before they come into the job. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you're talking about uniqueness. Um, are you talking about kind of stylistic or? Yeah, just uh, it can't be. It can't be style. It can also be just a way of thinking. Right. Um, uh, Maybe how they approach compositions or paintings. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. How how do they uh, do storytelling differently? Right. You know how how is the cinematography like talking to you? How is it? You know. Because story is such a big a part of now of concept art. Yeah, exactly, and also just the design aspects. I mean, yeah. I can I can mention like one guy we hired. Uh, I think it was like two years ago at CCP. His name is Pavel Shushuk, mm-hmm. uh, a fantastic guy, uh, super nice, and he just taught us like to approach everything very differently. And he's like he takes the uh, the form follows function mentality really to heart and he goes the full like crazy way into exploring uh, like sci-fi concepts I mean for example he was designing a ship and he started like thinking oh okay yeah so with heat dissipation um, that's a real issue in space because uh, heat uh, it's very hard to uh, 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 what's it called the thermal uh, 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 basically yeah, because it's very hard to cool uh, to cool spaceships down. Right. Down. 
Yep. Because there's like there's no air around to siphon the heat. You can't vent it, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, exactly. There's no way to vent the heat. So he started researching into just cipher concept into how it's done and coming up with his own ideas and then implementing them into his designs. Wow. And that's just crazy cool. You yeah. know, it's like suddenly you have these like ports on the on the sides that are ejecting some sort of a radioactive chemical yeah. just to dissipate the heat. And it just like it's it just it becomes so real. Yeah, because there's such certainly there's a function to yeah. it. Yeah, and again, it's the it's just the extra level of detail. I mean, I know, I think I've talked about this example numerous times, but there was a time where um, I was watching The Last of Us making of from the guys in Naughty Dog, and uh, one guy was doing a painting, and it was a it was a snow scene, and uh, he was painting these parts of the trees at the bottom of the trees. He was painting it as not normal ground. Um, where the snow had melted, and he was like, because, you know, if you study um, if you study trees and, and the kind of biology and makeup of trees, they uh, generate most of their heat at the, at the root of the base of the trees. Mm -hmm. yeah, so exactly. so that's where you would, there would be a clear in the snow. But that's the level of thinking, painting-wise. You know, most guys might just paint trees in the snow. You know what I mean, but yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, that guy's taking it to the next level and thinking, well, this is actually making it so much more realistic. So it's, yeah, it's... That's like I know what you mean. That's the thing you're looking for in people is to take patents to that next level that makes it even more believable. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. They just have that sort of thought, and they 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 can actually like look around, and uh, sort of come to conclusions of why it is that way. I mean, it's a little bit like being like a scientist, yeah, uh, in many ways, or an engineer, and yeah. you're just like deconstructing everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the visual world around you, and just the world, and just learning about it. Yeah. And the more you know, the more believable your you know paintings are going to be. I mean, even concepts. even when I talked to George back when we interviewed him, um, he was talking obviously working at Star Citizen, and he was saying that one thing that's helped him a lot is the, um, this kind of, I think he called it um, awareness or kind of like the 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 I'm trying to think of the word where he was more conscious of the world, you know, as he walked around it. Um, you know, he was he was basically thinking as he walked around. He was paying attention more to like the trees and the grass and how things were shaped. And um, yeah, he was maybe using mindfulness. Um, my, that was it. My, that's exactly what it was. It was mindfulness. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, totally. Uh, I, I started doing mindfulness a long time ago, or uh, and it's it really helps. So I mean, what is, in the sense of you saying you started doing it, I mean, is that just? I mean, I, I'm trying to break it down to layman's form here because obviously it's, it's a very um, alien thing to me, but is this just being more mindful of your surroundings or just taking an interest in what is actually making up wh where you're uh, walking? Or um, So uh, it's basically just uh, uh, one form of meditation, really. Um, I mean, you can meditate. It's, a, it's just a way to turn off your thoughts mm -hmm. and open your eyes. Yep. And it's just something you train, and it's uh, when you sort of click into it, it's very satisfying. I mean, you can almost compare it to, for example, when you go abroad, uh, all you're doing is like you're walking through a new city and you're looking all around and you're just like noticing this, this, and that, and da 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 da, and you're like looking at everything and you're admiring the architecture and looking up at the stories, you yeah. know, above you and everything. But all the locals. All the locals, they they just have their like tunnel vision. You know, yeah. they're just like because they, they see just, it every day. Yeah, they they see it every day, so they don't think about it. They they they're they're thinking about what to have for dinner or you know what to feed their dog or you know, whatever. And it's just like it's just breaking that thought, basically. Just stop thinking and just like try to look around and experience it anew. Yeah, I mean it's the same for me even now. Um, recently, you know, I'm trying to not engage on my phone in the morning and try and ignore that as much as I can. Um, mm -hmm. Read a lot more before bed instead of again. I think coming from a society years ago when I used to work in an engineering job with guys who had done the same job for 40 years and I was coming off as a, an apprentice, you know, you're not just a lot of bad habits and I think that is a real problem going forward as, as social media addiction. I really think it is a real thing. Where, Absolutely. Yeah, and it, it, you talk about the high again, it's the high of posting things online, getting that, you know, waiting for that like to come back in the comments. Um, and yeah, I think it is a, a serious problem that it's great to be able to just switch off and absorb nature as you walk through it. Um, yeah, because that's where that's where real satisfaction comes from. Yeah, um, I mean, the best anti antidepressant in the world is to go a walk. And the, yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I just get, like, 
So or, no, no, I was just saying as an artist again when you go off, you know, you're, you're playing air stuff or, or you're out taking, you know, acrylics to go paint or, you know, the, the whole sense of painting in the wild is to take in as much of the the world around you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, and it's it it can't hurt <laughs> to do it at least. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, again, it's one of these things that I try to teach people is that I find now a lot of guys who are younger than me who are trying to get into the industry is that they're glued to art station a lot of the times or when they do studies now, they study paintings of guys who are in the industry now, um, whereas they don't look back to the masters, they don't look back to just taking things in from nature. Um, I mean, I remember Ian McCaig, uh, the Star Wars artist, I mean, I was watching a talk with him and he talked about how he opened a couple of books to try to learn how to draw grass. And then uh, he just looked out the back garden and he was like, oh, there's a million blades of grass on my on my garden floor. He just he said he lay in his stomach and just drew it from, from one to one and mm -hmm. closed all his books. And he says that's really how people should be taking in art and how they should be drawn from his life. I mean, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing master studies and, and yep. looking at other people's uh, you know artwork and Definitely, admiring yeah. them and, yeah. and hating them. But the problem is you shouldn't be comparing yourself to them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, because it's just so disheartening and bad. Yeah. And the thing is also when you, while you're painting, um, yeah. it's it's only in the last like 5% of a painting where that it starts to click together, at least for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it looks like an ugly bitch until like <laughs> the last like three, three, four percent, and that's just the way how I build them up. Yeah. Um, and if I'm if I have something finished that I'm looking at on the side, mm. it's it's just gonna kill me. Yeah. You know, yeah. because it's just it's irrelevant. Yeah. You know, because I'm looking at a finished house and comparing my, you know, it's like building a house. Uh, I have this finished house. Uh, beside me and I'm, while I'm still trying to build this one and I'm wondering why doesn't it look the same yeah you know yeah but it's still just it's it's still forming but it's your version of the house and people don't understand that it has to be your version and not a copy of somebody else's version yeah also that I mean also that yeah definitely well I mean uh, I think that's great for me anyway Walker I'll uh, I'll let you go and, and get back to to your work because I know you're busy um, but thank you so much hey anytime it yeah, was really it, nice it was, it was great um, if people are looking for your work or want to check out anything you guys are doing with your studio um, where can they find you uh, do you mean um, uh, do you my, mean my personal work or the uh, or what I'm doing at work work oh well, well both obviously because obviously they want to see your work but I'm assuming the guys at the studio will probably want to promote you know whatever they're working on as well yeah I mean it's so far studios and we're working on a secret project at the moment, so cool, I can't really cool. say anything about awesome, that. Awesome, awesome. Um, which is surprisingly fun, um, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Uh, but never mind, I can't talk about that. <laughs> uh, but my personal work is just on uh, borkerart.com, and I'm on ArtStation as well, and and Facebook, and yeah. I mean, just add me on Facebook. And awesome. I usually I usually just accept all artists on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, nobody else. Yeah. And <laughs> if you ever if you ever post a photograph of what you're eating, I will block you. <laughs> yeah, the Instagram uh, wannabes better get out of there, man. Yeah, so no more coffee selfies and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Well, again, uh, uh, thanks very much, uh, Booker. And uh, thank you. Yeah, and I uh, hope to hear you guys um, back in the next couple of weeks. We'll be back with yeah. Colin and uh, next week's episode, and uh, speak to you all there. Bye. Absolutely. Thanks a lot.